You know what? If headhunting is going to be part of the game, go get a headhunter. Not a fighter, not an enforcer, not one of those noble types. A headhunter. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. The Rangers advanced to the Eastern Conference Final last night in Raleigh. I don't know and don't care what the final score was. I know that they won. I stopped watching after the Jacob Truba hit. I've had enough. I've had enough of watching that team and that player get away with murder thanks to that league and also in part to that television network partner. Because when Jacob Truba went directly at the head of Carolina's Seth Jarvis, when he laid his shoulder slash elbow slash chicken wing slash whatever, I'm tired of talking about Truba's hits like they all require Zapruder film treatment. It left Jarvis pretty much out. Jarvis is down on the ice. He's crawling on all fours back to the Carolina bench. The score at the time, by the way, was one nothing for New York. He's crawling on all fours, can barely function. And the Hurricanes, like th- this requires like a comedy script to complete this, but the Hurricanes get called for too many men on the ice because he wasn't able to get off the rink fast enough. And the Rangers score right after that. That's that's your National Hockey League right now. Nothing happened to Truba. Nothing will happen to Truba. There will be no supplemental discipline. Already, all of the wags in Bristol, Connecticut, right there in the shadow of Manhattan, were going to bat for Truba. Oh, clean hit. Look, he, he drove his shoulder into his chest, and then it rode up into the head. What the hell does that even mean when people say that? I hate that. What are they talking about? How do you drive a shoulder into the chest, and then it just kind of moves on up into the head? Baloney. Look at the hit. Look at Jarvis's head. Look at Jarvis crawling off the rink on all fours. Look at Jarvis being diagnosed immediately as being out for the rest of a game seven. Do you think he was acting? Do you think he was faking that? Do you think the NHL's concussion protocol people were in on it? He was hit in the head by a guy who hits people in the head on a regular basis. Not just Sidney Crosby and not just Jake Gensel. He's been doing it all year. There's footage galore. The number of times that he has been issued supplemental discipline for any of those hits to the head is exactly zero. Not once has anyone in the NHL's hilariously named Department of Player Safety said, you know what? I mean, Maybe we should start putting some of these things together and figuring out that this guy is just headhunting. He's looking for heads to hit, and he is looking for them to knock people out of games or out of series. And the league is okay with that. The league has given its endorsement to that. And therefore, the rest of the league's 31 teams should actually must respond accordingly. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how one dollar can be turned into five full meals for those in need. Visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. If must sounds too strong, consider the alternative. Consider the Penguins just waltzing into next season, operating in a league that they know for a fact allows headhunting by the same individual. They are operating at a disadvantage. 
Now, you can say, oh, get yourself a Ryan Reeves or a fighter. Well, first of all, those guys don't even exist anymore. Reeves is a dinosaur. But headhunters, you can find yourself a headhunter. For that matter, you can teach slash train a headhunter. Jacob Truba was a pussycat when he was in Winnipeg. Wouldn't touch a thing. Softest defenseman you've ever seen. Gets traded to the Rangers. He's under Gerard Gallant. And boom, just like that, he's decapitating people. What a coincidence. What a transformation. What a tough guy. What awesome hits, according to the New York media. Okay, great. So the Rangers did something smart. They taught someone on their team to be a headhunter. He went out, he hunted heads, and helped his team advance to the conference final. So they were one year ahead of everyone else. Let's see what happens when the rest of the league, the rest of the conference, even just the rest of the division, catches up. Believe me, I'm not, at least not in my own stance here, being over the top. I really, truly feel that if your team takes the ice in a situation where the other guys have the option to go at your best players' heads and you don't have that option, you are operating at a distinct disadvantage. No hyperbole here. A distinct disadvantage. And you know what I'm talking about because you felt it through all seven games of that New York series. That at any given moment, this clown was going to be able to go and just rip someone's heads off. And not get punished for it. And have no further deterrent toward doing it in the future. Do you think right now that John Cooper in Tampa isn't already trying to figure out how to counter this. I mean, he's got some tougher customers on the lightning bolts. He's got Pat Maroon. He's got guys who can take care of business. I don't know that he's got headhunters, but he's got guys that aren't going to back down and guys that might even instigate trouble with Truba. But is that going to be enough? Because if he makes up his mind, Truba does, that he's going to take out Steven Stamkos or Nikita Kucherov, or let's say Braden Point comes back from his injury and Truba's thinking, oh, he's vulnerable, I'll take off his head. Preventing that is really hard. It's hard to do on the ice. Players can't really do it before the fact. Coaches can't do it. Even the on-ice officials, to an extent, can't do it. The only thing that works and that has worked in the past, is really hard supplemental discipline, like what rightly and correctly happened to Matt Cook in his time with the Penguins. Cook was embarrassed on a massive scale. He was threatened with his career, not only by the league, but also by the management of the Penguins. And he was forced to change his game versus what's happening right now in New York with Truba, where he's being built up as some kind of hero for deliberately going at people's heads and injuring them in the era of CTE. Oh man, if only those lawyers had done a better job when they went after Batman in the NHL. But they didn't. When we come back, just one question. Today's J1Q comes from David, who asks, Will a Connor McDavid versus Nathan McKinnon playoff matchup be better than the Sidney Crosby versus Alexander Ovechkin matchups we've been lucky to witness? I don't think that it will. I, I really don't. Um, not in terms of an overall brand of hockey. What made those Pittsburgh versus Washington matchups, and by that, I think, think, David, I can't presume here, but really don't have a choice, that you're referring to the ones from when they were both new. Those were unbelievable games, and those were unbelievable individual performances between both Sid and Ovi. The ones that, that came later on, they were more about, uh, not to keep talking about this today, but the thuggery and 
and everything else that went into the Capitals just trying to, you know, beat the Penguins' brains in, and eventually the Penguins overcoming them until, of course, the Capitals overcame the Penguins for their only Stanley Cup in 2018. But the Sid versus Ovi matchups were the ones 10 years ago, and they were unbelievable, and they also were between two really good teams. Colorado versus Edmonton, to me, is not a particularly compelling head-to-head matchup. I see the Avalanche as basically scoring goals at will. Now, you can come back with an easy counter and say, well, of course, with McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and the way Evander Kane is playing and even some of the supporting cast that the Oilers have pitching into the offense, uh, Zach Hyman's another one. You can say, well, yeah, the Oilers are going to do that too. I'm sorry. There's just such a great deficiency on the Edmonton end when it comes to defending. And I think Colorado is at least capable of it. Colorado at least has guys back there. They've got Kale McCarr. They've got Eric Johnson. They've got guys who can play back there. And look, I'm not a big Darcy Kemper guy. But I'll take Kemper over Mike Smith every day and Sunday and then the day after Sunday. I do think some of these scores are going to be nuts. And I do think, no, 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 I don't think. I know you're going to see some individual numbers between McDavid and McKinnon. Not to mention, you know, Dreisaitl and Miko Rantanen and Gabe Landeskog and a lot of guys that the Avalanche have too. But I really see Colorado as just generally, overall, at every position, being better and deeper than the Oilers. That doesn't mean they're going to sweep or anything crazy like that, but I think they're going to take care of business here. The Avalanche really, really, really need to be winning the Stanley Cup this year. Unless, unless... My other ideal scenario is that the Rangers win the cup, but Gary Bettman goes to present the trophy to Jacob Truba, who comes flying in there with an elbow, knocks out Gary, takes a trophy away from him, just so that everyone in New York can say that it was completely clean. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow.